this time last year, he, he looked like he didn't have um, the defensive instinct to play in a back four. Suddenly he feels like you're really going to miss it because he's so important. What, what, what's, what's changed and how do you take what he had and turn it into a... Um. Yeah, I think, I think, look, I think he's, I've said with him and, and a number of the players, it starts with them, of them understanding and, and, and appreciating the fact that, you know, they need to, you know, keep improving as players and not, you know, sometimes when you get to, you know, the Premier League and you get to a big club, you, you kind of feel like, okay, well, that's me, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm good enough now and, and kind of, you soon realise that um, you need to keep growing, you need to keep pushing yourself, you need to keep developing and and Pedro certainly has from the start of the year obviously positionally it's changed for him a little bit um, probably drastically because you know for the most part he's played either as a fullback or as a wing back more and you know he's got unbelievable technical ability um, and I think that was people kind of use that in their wherever it's sort of system he played in but with us you've got to defend as well especially as a fullback and a lot of times you've got to defend that one-on-one -on -one. and he loves that aspect of it and <laughs> You know, I've said before, Wellesley has done a lot of work with him and all the back four, not just as a unit, but individually, to really embrace the challenge of being, you know, a one-on-one -on -one defender. And, and you can see that now that, you know, maybe in the past, maybe because people kind of highlighted it as, as a so-called weakness in his game, it was stuff that he kind of avoided a little bit. But now he's really relishing in that battle. And, um, you know, he's had great growth. And again, still young enough where, you know, his best years are definitely ahead of him. And he, again, he's laid a strong foundation for what's ahead. Can I also ask, um, do, you, do you have any plans to get a game in then when you, when you don't have a game next week? No, we'll, we'll, time off. Yeah, uh, well, we won't get time off, but yeah, no, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of arrange our training. We'll, we'll, for the most part, I, I always find that sometimes you play, you know, you, if, you, if you arrange sort of a, a training game or a friendly game with somebody else, you don't get the intensity. I, I think if we if we do sort of a, an internal game, I think we'll get more out of it. So that's the plan at this stage. And if I may, that's one more. Um, the, the Sonny story breaking his finger with ping pong, playing ping pong or South Korea, um, so made a few people smile for different reasons. I know you've not lost him, which is great. But do you have any memories from your career of injuries that didn't sort of? Yeah, I, I think you got a few stories confused there. I don't think you got injured playing ping pong. Is that what you're suggesting? Or? No, uh, no, yeah. Um, I mean, I've, no, I don't have any strange stories about that stuff. Um, but um, Sonny's great. He's uh, it's great to have him back. Um, he obviously uh, gave everything for his country. Fell up short. You know, fell short in terms of their goals. And uh, it's been great to have him back around the group. And um, yeah, in terms of the incident, I think it's been handled. Uh, yeah, that's for the sort of Korean Football Federation to, to kind of handle um, what I know of the story and I haven't asked too much about it, I don't know the detail, I think it was just Sonny being Sonny, being a leader and I think when you're a leader, uh, sometimes you get in the firing line. Paul? Um, I wanted to ask you about your home form, which is really good, you know, you the things you're, you're most pleased about, you know, it's so much to a bit of a fortress. Yeah, I think it's important. Um, again, it's kind of historically I've felt if you can have strong form, it, it kind of means two things. One is, you know, you, you kind of um, get the people who are most important, the supporters, you know, right behind you because, you know, it's great winning away and you kind of share it with a, a small group of, of travelling support, but there's nothing like when you know when your fans come to the stadium and, and see you win and f have that feeling after the game. It it just brings the teams closer. Um, you know, the sort of the two sides of the players and, and 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 our fans. So I think it is important. Um, and I think over a course of a season, you know, <coughs> irrespective of where you who you play, when you play away from home, there's always a challenge there. So you've got to try and take advantage of of kind of the stuff that. You know, you, you're kind of, for want of a better term, comfortable with whether, you know, you, you come to the stadium, you, 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 there's easy access because, you know, you, you, you've got a car park, you can, and it's, you're not travelling on a bus, you, you know the dressing room, you know the people there, everyone sort of. So you've got to transfer that, obviously, into performances. And, and if you can do that, that, that helps you because, you, like I said, invariably, you're going to get some challenges away from home that sometimes make it difficult to, to, to achieve a result. So, um, 
I've always put you know, great stock in, in trying to have you know, really strong home performances, um, mainly, like I said, because of the fans. It, it, I think you build a bond quicker when that happens. So that form seems to be really strong at the moment. It's always been a way in the world. Your bond seems probably one of the strongest. Is how, how do you work on, on building that? And how much stronger do you make your team? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a conscious effort. But what I do know is that, you know, for most fans, you know, they're, they're passionate about their football club. What they want to see is if they see a real, you know, concerted effort of a commitment to something, then for, for the most part, they'll back that, um, you know, because ultimately they want to be represented out on the football field. And when you want to be represented, you want to know that the, those that are wearing that, you know, that jumper are, are giving everything because, you know, for our supporters, are, in a sense, that's what they feel. They're, they're making a, a huge commitment. It's a lifelong commitment to, to their club. And whilst we as sort of managers or players, whoever we are, we, we, we don't have that lifelong commitment for the most part. We we're here for a short amount of time. They want to see that sort of effort anyway, like that sort of commitment. And so... I think they've seen it with our players. I think, you know, we, we obviously we've lost, I think, three games here at home. But even in those games, they saw the players giving it all and giving everything they can for for the team and trying to play football in a way that, you know, our, our supporters respond to. So, like I said, that's what builds a bond. I don't think it's words. I don't think it's gimmicks. I don't think it's, you know, trying to sort of create something artificial. I just think it's supporters seeing those who represent them giving everything for, for their football club. OK, we've got John and then finish with Dom, please. Just to return to the ping pong incident. Obviously, it's a funny story, it's a bizarre story, but it's, it's also about discipline and respect and team bonding. Is that the sort of captaincy you can get from yeah, look, I, like I said, I, I don't want to talk about it because I don't know all the details. I don't really want to know. It's, it's, it's kind of an internal matter. But like I said before, I think what I know of the story is, you know, Sonny is showing leadership and, and that's what leadership's about. You know, leadership's not about being popular or trying to make everyone happy. It's about, you know, um, if you see something that you don't think is right, that you stand up for it because you feel it's the best thing for the group and um, whatever that case may be. And I, I see that in Sonny. I think sometimes people mistake him with Sonny because he is, he's such a positive guy. Whenever you see him, he's smile and everyone, you know, everyone has a real affection for him, but he's a, he wants to win. He's a, you know, he, he doesn't like standard slipping. I've seen him do it around here, you know, him, you know, and, and with Romero obviously in matters, but especially Sonny, if, if something's not right, he'll, he'll, he'll say it. And sometimes it's not, really the popular thing to do um, but <clears throat> I think for the most part players and people who follow him respect that and that's what you need to do and as I said before sometimes that puts you in the firing line with the playing group sometimes it puts you in the firing line with the coaches sometimes it puts you in the firing line with with the club but as a leader if you believe that this is the right thing to do then you should stay strong in it and I think Sonny has those characteristics I was going to say that because everybody sees him as a smiley he's obviously a nice guy so you're saying Roy Keane's not a nice guy? <laughs> <laughs> Just to be clear, you said Roy Keane is not a nice guy. Yeah, okay. Uh, look, I think it's. I think you can be. I think you just got to be yourself. That's what leadership's about. You can't copy. You know, you, Sonny by nature is he is. He's a nice guy. He's very polite. He's very respectful. Doesn't mean you can't be a real winner and, and, and sort of a, a guy who, who has high standards because he wouldn't be playing at this level for so long unless he did. There's a real discipline that you need to, to last this long, and especially in the Premier League, um, in a position that he plays, there's a real discipline and in a sort of um, drive to, to, to have high standards. And I think that transfers to leadership. And, you know, I've seen all kinds of leaders and and the best ones are the ones who are themselves because I think people respect that. When you try and put it on and try and be somebody else, then I think people see through that pretty quickly. Did you know that about him before you Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I mean, obviously, you know, I followed him pretty closely from, you know, um, career and national team and, you know, being an adversary and knowing how well respected he was in the game, um, um, 
in that part of the world, I knew that, you know, that's the kind of person he was. And, you know, I knew, obviously, knew a few people here at Tottenham as well, and um, they all spoke in the same sort of way about him. Dom, to finish, please. Uh, just a question on uh, Eve Basuma. He hasn't started for you for two months. It's been a slightly stop-start period for him. Obviously, he's had after, he had the suspensions as well. But how much are you looking forward to having him available again for a sort of extending period now towards the end of the season? Yeah, um, as you said, it was pretty hard to start him when he was at AFCON and he was suspended. So um, it's great to have him back. And uh, yeah, look, it's fair to say, I think with Bess, he's probably a little bit frustrated at the way the season's gone because the start of his season was outstanding for us. And, um, you know, um, he was a big part of sort of why we, we got off to a flyer, you know, in the first 10 games. He, you know, his ability to, to sort of really, you know, it was really early on, I could see that. You know, the way we played, it really suited him and he really sort of thrived in that responsibility and that role. So, yeah, the fact that he's back, obviously, <coughs> coming back from, from the tournament, you know, him and Sonny and, and even Pape, I was wary about throwing him in straight away, knowing that, you know, um, you know the, how difficult those tournaments can be in the travel. But he's ready to go. He's had a good week of training. And, um, yeah, looking forward, like I said, with him and, and Rodri and, Obviously, Matt is now back. Um, La Celso is now available. Uh, Skippy and, and Pierre, we're, we're looking really strong through there, not just to start games, the ability to trust to change games. And um, I think that's going to be a real big part of us having a strong finish of the season. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.